Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to G2 Class Legends. Uh, my name is Soto. I'm joined here by the host of this tournament, Lothar. And we have just seen an amazing semi-final between uh, Zetalot's Priest and the Raging Worgen Patron Warrior of Crane. Uh, Zetalot able yep. to clutch it out going through to the finals. So we're going to see Priest in Grand Finals. And now we have the contest to see who will join them, Lothar, between JJ's Rogue and Life Coach's Druid. Yeah, and this is something that, uh, well, usually it, it's a matchup that um, I would say Rogue is not favored at all. But we have seen that JJ is playing a lot of minions in his current brews of Rogue, right? So if he manages to pull off some let's say, Agent of Farsi on turn 3, into a Tomb Pillager on turn uh, 4, into a Azure Drake on turn 5, and then get advantage of uh, having a free spell from um, Preparation to Sap, an example, Preparation ex uh, sorry, preparation Eviscerate. Yeah. This will be the clutch play to win against a Druid. If, if of course, that will be the case. But um, it seems like, the, I would say the, the, the matchup is pretty close anyway. Right, because of that, that yeah. rogue is playing so much minions right now. Yeah. So, I think it's I think it's pretty close. If you talk to most people, the exception to that rule is if you talk to a rogue player, who will tell you that it is heavily rogue favored, just like every other match in Hearthstone. They seem to have this perception that rogue wins every matchup. But uh, there we go. JJ has certainly been proving that so far. He's been running roughshod through the bracket with his rogue deck, and he's taken out. Uh, I believe a warlock and i think it was a druid in the first round that he played i can't actually figure out who it is it was top um, of my head. druid versus druid and the player was uh elki no 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 uh super jj super oh super jj oh sorry yeah. um my god what was that yeah it's been a long day right <laughs> well it was yesterday <laughs> it's been a long um, weekend yeah I need to catch up on Never mind. I'm pretty special. sure it was yeah. a druid he defeated in the first round. So it was druid and a warlock that he's managed to beat with rogue. But he's going to queue back into a druid now. And like you said, this is a very tempo-focused matchup. Cards like preparation will be key. But you mentioned that uh, Life Coach had been mentioning in the in the G2 chat that he may just have something up his sleeve for this matchup. I will see if it turn if it will turn up because you know you need to draw your surprise factor too. Like th that was the case with Gara, right? When he was playing the zoo against the hunter and he didn't draw the Kazan Mystic until the last two games. Right. Um, but we are into the game and Life Coach has a pretty solid opening hand here. Living Roots into Wild Growth into Shredder. More than solid, in fact. It's one of the dream openings for the deck. So he's just going to go along his merry way. Living Roots are going to start dealing a little bit of damage. Wild Growth is going to come down. And we're just awaiting to see what JJ has in his hand right now. But... I imagine his turn here either way is just going to be dagger up and, and deal with one of these roots. Mm -hmm. We don't see the hand right now, but I'm guessing you, you won't have anything better to do on turn 2 unless you have a coin agent, I guess. But you probably won't do that anyway because you would like to save the coin for turn 5 if you have, or turn 4 if you have a Violet Teacher. Yep, and there we go. We do see the Violet Teacher is in fact in JJ's hand. That is, as you mentioned, one of the key cards in the matchup. Violet Teacher with a preparation early in the game can really swing the state of the board. You demand the swipe from the Druid opponent, and even if they swipe, you you basically use up their entire turn. You get to continue developing with, with something like Azure Drake or Loatheb. So mm -hmm. he's going to be looking to pick up a, a preparation pretty soon here with that Violet Teacher if he can. Oh, oh well, look at that. Hey, hmm. well, that's nice. Uh, but what do you do? Do you play the Violet Teacher? I guess you, you have to, right? Yeah, Violet Teacher, Prep Abyss on the Shredder. Hope that the minion that comes out is, is relatively small. A 1-1 or a 2-1 or a that the uh, the tokens can deal with would be lovely. Uh, he's going to Abyss it. We'll see what comes out. Uh, one is for minion. That's mm. not bad. Because it doesn't die. And there's the Harrison Jones. Yep. A good weapon against Assassin's Blade. Yeah, that's very true. We have seen JJ is carrying Assassin's Blade in at least one of his rogue decks. I believe we've only seen him play one throughout the tournament so far. Yes, and, and it was immediately destroyed by the Blade Flurry. And this is something that is worth noting that most of the rogue players will actually not give a opportunity for their opponents to destroy the weapon because they are destroying the, the weapon themselves. Yeah. So um, I'm guessing that Life Coach might just go for the Harrison Jones as a third engine of law, 
and just destroy a dagger that we prepare to use to, um, to be used on a deadly poison, right? Or we just get, draw one card and destroy a deadly poison. Yeah, that's usually the most common usage of the of the Harrison in this matchup. It's just taking down a, a two charge dagger that he's just equipped. Um, but Life Coach is struggling with his options this turn of whether he wants to uh, take down the Violet Teacher using all three of his attacks, or um, whether it's a matter of just taking out the one ones, leaving the Violet Teacher in play, and letting the shade grow. And it looks like he's favored taking out the tokens here, which is going to let the uh, Violet Teacher continue to get a bit of value going forward. Mm hmm. That's true. What do you think about the Lotub instead of anything else? You yeah. kind of are not gaining value from the one ones, and it seems like your opponent doesn't have the uh, the swipe at all, so you might just abuse that. Yeah, it's a very good point. You can uh, you can abuse it by not you can abuse him not having swipe and just continue to get value out of your tokens here. You have a ton of playable spells this turn, um, but on the on the flip side, if your opponent does have the swipe or does top deck the swipe, that play is going to punish you really hard. But it looks like JJ is going to take the brave play here, gets the read that there's no swipe in hand, and he's going to hope and pray that this Tinker Oil hits the Violet Teacher. It does not. Okay. Well, there's a one to three chance. Yep. Not that high. Now the Harrison Jones will hold some value. He'll destroy the oil, which is okay. It's kind of slightly better. Um, deadly poison. And he will get rid of the 4-1 minion with the hero power, right? Right. You yeah. lose the surprise factor, and in the next matches, your opponent will never leave the Assassin's Blade open. Sure. It's what kind of too late. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty nice because the Violet Teacher is still going to live on the board for one more turn, possibly. Unless, yeah, I was going to say, he might just choose to hero power down the 4 1 here. Yeah, I would definitely do that. Yeah, so the Violet Teacher is still going to live another turn, uh, quite possibly. So that swipe can still have some value going forward. As a Drake backstab on the Harrison here and trade in the 1 1. So the swipe is still looking pretty good for the following turn. True. Well. Was still low tip and the Edwin Van Cleef. Oh! oh! Hello! Okay. Bruce and Harrison. All right. I was going to say, if, if Life Coach was you know, making a big deal about having Harrison in his druid, you know, oh, check this out, guys, I have Harrison. Yeah, I was gonna, <laughs> that's a little bit disappointing, but yeah, Harrison and Ooze, that's uh, definitely worth shouting about when you're facing a matchup against Rogue. And yeah, as we said, this matchup is pretty nip and tuck, you know, probably just a percentage of point or two favored either way, depending on who you talk to. So the inclusion of Harrison Jones and Acidic Swamp Booze is going to be a huge deal. Yeah. But now, how do you deal with that? Do you just use the swipe and trade with the shade? Or you just go for the um, Dr. Boom this turn or Ancient of Law and grind out your opponent to use the maximum amount of spells possible. So probably another boost on the weapon, right? Yeah, it's very true. I mean, if he swipes this turn, it is his whole turn. That's the downside. The swipe is very appealing. So he might just feel like it's better to play Dr. Boom since it's such an oppressive minion against Rogue. And it looks like that's what's happening. And I imagine the Shade is coming out here to trade with the Violet Teacher. Yep, looks like that's what's happening. I'm kind of surprised by that. If you have, if you hold the swipe, why are you not pushing your opponent into using the, all, of the, all of the spells as soon as possible? So you can punish him with the swipe next turn. And most likely your shade will not die because you already saw one. Um, you already saw one um, oil being played, right? Right. Yeah, I mean that's very true, but it's not. It's not really a punishment to swipe away a bunch of extra one ones that they made in the first place because right, like those one ones don't exist until you let them exist, right? Yeah, so but uh, you... it's just. About baiting out the spells, sure. In maybe not in a, a comfortable position, but you're so aware that the one was hold a lot of value against the druid in the first place. Yep. This is why you might overcommit with not perfect scenario for the spells. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, but you know, I'd, I'm, I'm okay with the trade there. He he did trade into the three five instead of the four four, which makes a lot of sense because he he kept the two health on his minion, which requires another answer from the rogue beyond just the the one one that was on board or the dagger and so i think he definitely picked the right trade if he was going to make the trade but you're right the other viable option was certainly just to keep the shade in stealth there what to do? Hmm. well now is a tricky situation you can't use the big game hunter on the six six minion hmm. nope. 
And looks like he's just gonna go for the Ancient of Law play, try and pick up some more options for future turns. Again, Innovate Keeper. Innovate Keeper would be legit, yeah. Oh. oh. Uh, no. ah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it looks like, is he gonna innovate out the, wait, innovate swipe? Innovate swipe? What wait. just happened? What? Life coach, what the, what? What, uh, um, hello? <laughs> okay, that was a mistake. Huge mistake. Yeah. Life coach is visibly upset about this turn. Right. Roped, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that play was just doomed from the get-go, really, because if you were going to make the innovate swipe play, you might as well trade the boom bot first, right? And then decide whether you're going to innovate swipe or not. But he cast the innovate, and then chose to trade the boom bot afterwards, and then wow. into the swipe. Yeah, it was just... Oh, look, keeper. Yeah, keeper. Oh. Well, now you kill the 5-5, five five, you kill the 6-1, and you play Druid of the Claw. And you taunt it up? No, you kill the 3-1 immediately. Because you want to play around Sap. I must safeguard the Sure. Wait, uh, you actually you can destroy Swampu. the weapon. Yeah, I was going to say, Acidic Swamp is definitely a consideration here instead. So you can kill the minimum of the hero power and destroy the weapon. Right, yeah, exactly. That's, that's better. I think so too. Well, is there any other way? Hmm. You can think about playing the big gum hunted. No, you can't. You have six mana. Um, no yep. There goes the Essex Swampoos and Hero Power. Is JJ surprised by the Essex Swampoos? End reaction? Not really. No. Brushes his Nothing hair. But it's nothing new. Yep. There's uh... the sap. Yeah, but the sap blade flurry hand is not exactly ideal here. Uh, how much damage would this be from combo? Five plus fourteen plus four. That's that's damage. That's twenty three. That is enough to finish the game. So if he doesn't sap one of these minions, he is dead to combo. Um, uh, can you play around it? I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. Um, no, I mean you, you don't have to sap. I guess you can like hit one and blade flurry. That doesn't seem great either. Well, if you do that, you're still dead. Uh, you'd go to 18, yeah, you would still be dead, you're right. So yeah, I think he's just gonna shut his eyes and hope that uh, Life Coach doesn't have combo in hand, which as of right now, he doesn't, but he is uh, a long way behind on this board right now. Savage Roar currently adds, add, uh, adds 8 damage, so that's 12, 15, 7, um, 17 damage, right? Did I count that correctly? 4, uh, 7, 9, and 4 8. 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 8, yep, 17. That was the sap anyway. I'm the keeper. Interesting. So now I'm the second keeper. This gives the opportunity for Drew the Claw just to come down and be unanswered. Can even play it yeah. in turn mode now if he wants to. Just value stats mode, having seen the sap come out. And it was the sap that was being top decked. So yep. I guess you can make the guess that there's no other sap in the hand. Yep, very true. So I definitely wouldn't mind just the, the security play here of uh, Druid of the Claw because Rogue dealing uh, six damage with, with two cards, especially one that they've been holding on to for a while, definitely has the potential to kill you. So uh, yeah. You can actually be dead to a, a Eviscerate, Drake into a Eviscerate. Yeah, Drake, Evis, Deadly Poison, Blade Flurry. Like, there's a lot of combinations of two cards that can end the game here. So I think Druid of the Claw Taunt form is, is the way to come down and that just kind of limits it down to the... To the Eviscerate Drake, right? Uh, well, no, even then that wouldn't be lethal, right? It would be, because you have 5 damage, Eviscerate, and Blade Flurry. For right, two. sure, 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 sure. But, like, I'm talking about, like, Life Coach is looking for combinations of two cards that kill him, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah that, that would take that out of the equation, and he would just need, like, the chain draws from Drake into something else. Hmm. Violet Teacher not gonna get it done here. Uh, looks like it is concede rogue time. <laughs> Attention, class. Um, obviously, he doesn't know he's dead looking back at the board, but um, Life Coach more than has him covered here. 11 on board, plus the Savage Roar and the Keeper. And he's going to get the job done, and despite that um, pretty catastrophic play in the middle of the game there with the, uh, the boom bot and the swipe, he I has agree. enough to clutch out the game here. And wow. There we go. Game one to Life Coach. That could have been really ending, uh, that could have end badly for Life Coach. Like that mistake of leaving a 6 1 and a 3 1 on board, that was unnecessary damage. 
that could have killed him with an Azure Drake Eviscerate, an example. So, yeah, quite a big deal. Uh, but fortunately for him, kind of lucked out some mm, a little bit. And now he's in the lead in the matchup. Um, I would guess that Life Coach stays with the same deck for the whole match. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I fail to believe that switching to the Druid deck that doesn't have Ooze and Harrison in it is going to be better against any Rogue deck. So, looks like oh, JJ has JJ switched, switched though. Yeah. Right? He didn't have a, a Miracle. I mean, no. Gazette and Auctioneer. No, we, the saw, whole, the, whole we saw the Tinker Oil in the previous game as well, so it seems unlikely the Oil and Gadgetzam will be in the same deck. So it looks like we've switched to Miracle Rogue, and knowing JJ, he's a big proponent of the Malagos Miracle deck, so that's probably what we're looking at here. The problem is he already has an, not a really good opening hand. Double Blade Flores is clunky as hell. It is, but speaking of clunky, Life Coach's hand, not exactly ideal either. He does have the Innovate that can speed up one play, um, and I guess he's going to try and uh, hold on to that all the way to the Emperor, because the rest of his hand needs speeding up quite a lot here. Hmm. Well, yeah, you keep the coin, you keep the Innovate for Emperor, and yeah. that's about it. I mean, turn three Emperor, turn four Drake, that seems to be the line here, but... If the Rogue was able to try and get something going early, that might be a little bit too slow, especially if there's a Sap or something. Um, but unfortunately, the, uh, the the hand from the Rogue from JJ's perspective is pretty weak as well. But that is another 7-drop being drawn. Did JJ show Dr. Boom, by the way? In any, well, this is the first time we see this deck, right? But in the I other deck? don't think Boom was in the other deck, no. And I'm nice, just a cycle, trying to pick up something to do. He does get his Okay, this is, this is the Malagos deck. Oh, okay. So we can play Emperor Thorasan or we can play Dr. Boom this turn. <laughs> what do you favor? Uh, I think I'd go for the Emperor. Gives you the most flexibility. And then next turn, you can either just play Drake, you can innovate Boom, you can innovate an Ancient of Law. Like, suddenly your whole hand becomes playable if you just innovate out the Emperor here. But... And you have a dis discounted Innovate, too. Ah, yeah. Minus, minus one mana Innovate. So now we get additional two Innovates just by playing the Emperor. Yep. And it's a huge threat that needs to be answered right, right away. And how and do you answer that Emperor? There is no answer, unless you want to do completely miserable things here. He's going to prep he's the going fans. For it. Yeah, he's going to try and dig for an Abyss. Doesn't get it. Mm. Yeah. Now this so, doesn't look good, because now a life could probably go for oh it. Oh my god, that turn. Oh, wow. <laughs> Azure Drake into Wrath for 4, deal 5 damage to the face, get a discount again. On the draw too. <laughs> oh, life coaches, top decks in this tournament so far today have just been outrageous. There's, there's no way anything... I mean, I understand, like, you can play Dr. Boom here, that's pretty awesome, but there's no way anything is better than Drake Innovate Wrath here, right? Like... It just can't be. Okay, good. Hmm. So Drake Innovate Wrath does come down, he's gonna get five ma two 5-mana laws and a 5-mana Dr. Boom in his hand. He can take his pick as to which of those he wants to play on the following turn. Yep. 5-mana Dr. Boom. <laughs> the sap? What do you do with that? You can sap the Azure Drake, you can sap Emperor, but that doesn't achieve anything at all. Nope. Another I... Tomb Pillager, you have the minions, but the minions are not doing anything this turn. Oh my god, this hand is getting ridiculous. <laughs> Plays Dr. Boom, he'll probably go ahead and trade the Drakes. Yeah, why not? Safe, yeah. You get additional... <laughs> Three days of Emperor. Yep. Now you have four mana Ancient of Laws. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. Oh wow, this is going downhill fast. It is. And this is this has just been Druid doing Druid things. This is nothing to do with the teched out Druid that Life Coach has to counter Rogue. This has just been Emperor Thorus oh, wow. winning well, games. That was quick. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Remember, remember when I said that Druid hand was a little bit clunky? Turns out it wasn't. Who knew? <laughs> well, at least it wasn't the repetition of what we um, saw against AK Wonder, right? Yeah. The incredible top decks from Double Wild Grove 10 1.
I mean, that, that Wrath top deck to go with the Drake on that turn was pretty crucial. He was already a long way ahead, of course, but by having that Emperor unanswered for mm -hmm. one turn. But being able to pick up a way of dealing with that Drake that he had... Uh, sorry, no, the Tomb Pillager that he had no no answer for originally was so huge because it let him just keep the Emperor, keep pushing damage, discounted his Dr. Boom by another turn. It's just yeah. crazy stuff. By the way, I was thinking about not keeping one of the Innovates because you, your opponent plays Saps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a valid concern, but uh, Life Coach may just be riding high on the wave of last game, wants to get the biggest things out as, as early as possible since it worked so well for him in the previous game. Um, but it looks like we are stuck hero powering this turn. Yep. You build up the armor. Sure. The ooze will be not played until we'll see at least one buff on the weapons, right? But the problem is that Life Coach is not aware that um, JJ switched the deck, right? Might That's not be aware. Yeah. Oh, maybe he is aware that he switched the deck, but he might not know what is the deck because we, he didn't show anything, any information at all yet. So there was no Emperor shown from JJ. There was no Malagos shown from JJ. The only, the only thing that he did show was the Tomb Pillager, and that's basically a now standard drop in right. JJ's Rogues, right? Yep. So, hmm. And yeah, this draw from Life Coach not quite as oppressive as the last one. The last draw did start slow, but this is the point where it started going off. He played turn three Emperor Thorasan and everything went downhill very, very quickly for JJ. But as you can see, that double innovate keep just hasn't been rewarded by hitting any relevant minions and the force of nature draw doesn't help him achieve anything here. So unless he wants to tempo big game hunter, which you know is a viable option, you probably don't suspect too many targets, but the problem is that it's just so easily answered by backstab that it may not even feel worth it. But it's like he is going to play out the, the old Jungle Panther here and see uh, see what's up. The bad Jungle Panther, by the way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Jungle Panther wouldn't have had this happen to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's really important to keep that coin and prep for the Miracle. For the, I'm sorry, sorry for the Gazetan. Wild Oh, this is getting clunky. Too much ramp and nowhere to go is the story here from Life Coach. Wild Growth, two innovates, but no large minions to pair with them. Um, so he may be forced here to try and make something happen. He can use the Keeper of the Grove and then innovate a hero power just to take control of the board. Might be his best option at this point, because next turn, even if he draws a 7-drop, he'll be able to play it only using one innovate. So the second innovate in his hand is very quickly losing value. As you said, uh, Lothar, it's a bit suspicious to keep both of them in the opening hand. Yeah, that's, I'm just usually worried about the fact that if your minion that you double innovate isn't Emperor, yeah. Sap destroys your play. Sure. Because imagine, even if you play Dr. Boom with Double Innovate and you get Sap, well, okay. You just play. You destroyed with one Sap two cards, which are Innovates, and you will not see that Dr. Boom until turn seven. And even if you will, you're, you can be prepared then. Because you yeah, know. Yeah, sure. There's you've, Dr. Boom, right? You've basically used your two Innovates as exploding Wisps, right? That's what's happened. Zero mana, you put two 1-1s one on the board, but they just kind of blow up in your opponent's face. So. Yep. Sure. Uh, oh. Shift to side. Sure, why not? Yeah, seems reasonable. Picks up an Abyss, so he's he's getting pretty uh, close to some, some crazy Miracle turns here. He may choose to go for the Emperor first, just to create even more Miracle, but um, the, the alternate concern with this deck, of course, is that you have to uh, consider whether you want to hit your Malagos with Emperor to create some, some crazy stuff later in the game. Hmm. Well, that seems like a Keeper and Hero Power. Most likely. Yeah, keep a hero power seems reasonable. I mean, you don't have like so much options to think about anyway. Either you swipe this, and you're not developing the board, and uh, hmm. I must safeguard the if you use the swipe, you're kind of defenseless against the Violet Teacher, and Life Coach might not be aware there's no Violet Teacher anymore. So this might be another factor that why he keeps the swipe in his hand, but uh, it's just better to play something on board and deal with the minion anyway, right? Sure. It looks like JJ is just going to go for the Emperor here and make sure his Gadgetzan turn on the follow-up is as explosive as possible. Does and... discount a couple of really nice cards in the Eviscerates and the Blade Flurries for Malagos later. He has the pre-nerf Gadgetzan. He does, yeah. 
I mean, that, that is the card text of Emperor Thorasan, right? It's like, six mana, five, five, unnerf all your cards. That's, that's basically <laughs> what it says. It works on Unleash the Hounds, then you give plus one attack on your beast and charge. Yep. Okay, sounds good. Oh, you make it four mana <laughs> instead. <laughs> yeah, it unnerfs your Leroy for you, it unnerfs your Auctioneer. Unfortunately, it can't bring Warsaw and Commander back, but... Uh, From the graveyard. Yep. There are limits to even Emperor Thorasan's powers in this game. Wow. Will this be Sacrifice Keeper, Double Innovate, Dr. Boom? Uh, yeah. I kind of like it. I don't see where else those Innovates are going anytime soon. For sure. It's a long, I mean, it's a, it's a big investment, but otherwise you don't have anything else. Yep. No, I like it. <laughs> JJ's eyes go, yeah, grow very, very wide there as he's looking at that play. Oh. Sap. Dr. Boom comes down, but it is able to be answered by the Sap here. Gadgetan preps Sap, hope that he draws into something else. If not, he'll just Blade Flurry away these Boom Bots, probably with his remaining one mana. We'll see. Yeah, most likely, but it m might might kill his Gadgetan. It might. Ah, he's going to choose to pass it up. Interesting. He's going to choose to hold on to the Blade Flurries. Um, one for more value, but two for the potential of Malagos later, because nine mana Malag no, sorry, nine mana Maligos. Say that ten times fast. Um, plus the <laughs> plus the one mana blade flurry is going to be uh, explosive on a on a druid board. So let's count the damage. I think Rogue has no option of uh, dealing twenty three damage in one turn with seven mana. Even nope. with the um, Gazetan board, I was just thinking about dealing two damage to the face and playing the the boom bot uh, sorry the dr boom just to play combo next turn to maximize the damage yeah sure and this was another reason why jj will have chosen to hold on to the blade flurry uh, I mean, well the azure drake died I think yeah that. um be another reason why jj chose to hold on to the blade flurry because he probably felt like the boom was going to come down next turn so by using the drake in combination with the blade flurry he's able to deal with the full board again so now he still has that second blade flurry left for whenever he draws the malagos and in case there was any doubt that sinister strike in his hand pretty much confirms that this is using malagos as a finisher exactly so still one mana almost mind blast with azure drake sure yeah, that's a bad comparison anyway uh Seems like the turn here is to play Living Roots as two one ones and attack with Hero Power. Sounds bad, but what else do you do during this turn? It really does, yeah. Well, you can keep it for 10 10 to have 16. Yeah. With the combo. It's a consideration. Like, the Living Roots might end up doing more damage from hand than it does by putting it on the board. Because obviously, exactly. things like flat Fan of Knives, things like that, can all deal with it very, very comfortably. So, that's probably what Life Coach is thinking about right now. But I feel like he has to go for some sort of board presence, even as small as it is. No. All right. He disagrees. So, second Drake. And an agent to build a prominent board presence and you are high enough in health to not be worried about the combo Ooh. Ooh. but two innovates were already used right we haven't seen the emperor, emperor though yet. right so yeah yeah but the damage is stacking it is and there's also the heal bot in hand so jj sh should be able to pretty comfortably be able to stay above the range of even double combo so i don't think this hand building up here is is resulting in any sort of win condition for life coach and it looks very much like jj is gonna gonna take a game back in this series yeah looks like so i mean you can i guess life coach just can combo out this turn that's it kill yeah, the minions deal some option. damage he can draw another Force of Nature next turn. Yep. And deal 16 damage. How much damage? Wait, wait, wait. How much damage can he do right now? Six, basically. Yeah. So, unfortunate that not the range of another combo, even with the Living Roots. He's just missing one damage. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, one damage off. Um, from Life Coach's perspective, maybe there was an option to just kill one of the minions and go face with the other one, but we can see Ooh. from JJ's hand that the uh, the heal bots would immediately shut that option down. But maybe that was a win condition for Life Coach to go face with one of the trees extra, leave a minion in play. And oh. wow, yeah, I mean, okay. this, this was the out, right? I think. Yeah, this was the out, the unimpossible out. Yeah. Obviously, it well, well, maybe not down. one possible out, because now we can again clear the board, mm -hmm. deal some damage. 
and hopefully you will, you will draw Engine of Law next turn. Yep, makes sense. I mean, I think this is nearly all the spells out of Life Coach's deck now, so he's just going to draw mostly minions for the rest of the game. I think like, there's, there's one swipe left in the deck, and the rats, I believe, are still in there, but apart from that, I think his entire deck is minions at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, the, maybe the wild growths as well. Well, there's one swipe. Oh, sorry, you said it already about yeah. it. Um... Valigos? Nope. Uh, second Fan of Knives, cycled out, losing enough mana for the heal bot. Go. There is the Malagos, okay. And... There's the Malagos I'd like to find. Yep. So he may have been considering just daggering up that turn, so he can have access to Malagos, Sinister Strike, Blade Flurry in the same turn, but that's not yet going to be lethal, so there's no, there's no rush to do that just yet. Wait, how much damage is that? That's, um, 5, 9... And 10, 16. Yeah. And that's too off lethal. Right, but he doesn't have the dagger up right now anyway, so he yeah. wouldn't have mana to do it. But... Oh, that's a cool card. Now we can sap damage with the dagger, play Thalnos, get additional damage on board. Yep. Should like enough it. to clear it up next turn. Oh, wait, he just played oh, he just just the Malagos. Just gonna jam the Malagos. Well, Trends. how do you deal with that as a druid? You don't have any combo left. Uh, Keeper of the Grove? Has he already seen them being used? That would be my concern. I think you can, you can set up for lethal the other way anyway, just by sapping and daggering face and playing the Blood Mage, as you suggested, and that doesn't get countered by the, the potential Keeper. So, I don't know. I mean, this is going to work out well for him, so... Yep. Gets to load up the Blood Mage as well, just for that extra spell power. Six spell power. Yep. Sick. And uh, needs to attack with the Malagos first, I believe, before the Blade Flurry comes through. Or is, does he just have the damage? He just has the damage anyway. It's fine. Yeah. No, oh, no, he didn't. He was one short. So actually, a taunt off the Pilot Shredder there would have prevented lethal. Oh. He didn't attack with the Malagos first, so Anoyatron. Um, wow, that's actually true. Yeah, Anoyatron, Frostwolf Grunt, etc., would have actually prevented lethal. So a little bit of a sequencing order from JJ there, but. But it was that. A, very small percentage punish that he doesn't he doesn't get hit by and ends up taking out the game. Even with with that mistake, there was no way of making a comeback for no. life coach. So. No, there wouldn't have been for sure. Yeah. Uh, and we're jumping into the next game. Like things, I think like life coach still plays the same deck. Doesn't make any sense to switch, even though it's a Malagos uh, Malagos rogue right now, which relies on weapon less, but there's yeah. still. Deadly poison and blade flurries right there, so it might disrupt the mana flow uh, for JJ. So true. It's interesting to me as well that um, JJ chose to switch at some point. He was playing the the oil rogue originally. Um, I guess his reaction to that is just to rely less on weapons, as you said, because of the Harrison and the ooze. Because I think traditionally you feel a little bit more favored against druid with the the standard oil rogue, just because it operates a bit faster. You know, the the Malagos miracle, you know is a little bit slower starting up, doesn't really have like those big Violet Teacher prep turns and, uh, you know, oil tempo turns that that the Oil Rogue does. So, as you said, I think his switch to Malagos in the first place was just as a reaction to seeing all that weapon destruction in Life mm -hmm. Coach's deck. Yep. And yeah, it's working out really well for him. And he has a dream. Backstep, prep, Gazette, and Anivis Raid. Yep. That's really the perfect, yeah. perfect way of dealing with um, druids in general right now, because he can play hardcast, just uh, hardcast the agent on turn four. It's not about the fact that it's like not mana efficient; it's just to to, to have a body on board. Turn five will be Azure Drake. You can kill something with a backstab if needed, and then turn six is just ultimate tempo play and card draw at the same time. Right. Um, I'm not sure what Life Coach is thinking about here. Maybe just considering whether or not he's playing the Living Roots alongside this Pilot Shredder, just making sure he calculates his entire turn before he does anything. Um, otherwise, like, if he was to play the Shredder first and then stop and think, you re kind of reveal the information to your opponent, right? Like, I have Living Roots in my hand and I'm considering whether or not I play it. And so he just decides to play the Shredder and it looks like Living Roots is going to come down alongside it here. Mm -hmm. Well, he just saw one Final Knives, right? Yep. Yeah. Seems good. Does get challenged immediately, at least half of the living roots by the the dagger that's up. But then you do take away the rogue's dagger. They have to invest two more mana at some point to to deal with that. 
Ah, JJ is thinking about the value of the backstab for free damage next turn. Yes. But uh, seems better to just do it this time. Yeah. Again, the, the shredder sequencing is a little bit off here because the taunt again will have stopped you from taking down one of the one ones. Yeah, it might have. It might. It could have been punished with double sever dwarf. Yep. Innervate engine of law, maybe second. What uh, what boots would be? Uh, would be drawn. Oh yeah, that'd be really nice actually just to trade into the 3-3 three, three with that one token. But Emperor uh, is a nice pickup with that full combo in hand already as well. And yeah, this is kind of the worry. Just, you know, Miracle Rogue does just take a, a couple of extra turns just to set up and get going than Oil Rogue does traditionally. So. Yes, but look at this. Now, um, Super JJ will be pushed to use Azure Drake and Prep, Prep Eviscerate this. to yeah. deal with that board. Wait, that's much better. A fan of this, right? Yes. yes, perfect. Malik was already in hand, and you have that crap, which is crucial to that single um, gadget and auctioneer. Ooh. Innovate, not a great draw right now. Uh, we're not, we're not uh, anywhere near the point of the game where innovate combo is a threat. So we're probably just going to see the emperor come down this turn. And yeah. Although uh, that Fan of Knives draw for JJ was excellent to be able to keep that prep in hand. Prep is the only spell in his hand right now. So if he draws a minion here, yeah, even Blade Flurry, that's not yeah, good enough. He can't prep enough. Blade Flurry with no dagger up. So this kind of puts a, a delay on the um, on the Gadgetan turn here. And more importantly, he just has no way to deal with Emperor. Well, he can go uh, in a risky route. With, uh, on a, um, he can take the risk and play the Gadgetan Auctioneer prep into the unknown. Right. Or he can take the really miserable option of just attacking it, daggering it, and blade flurry. Oh. That would kill it. Yeah, but I mean, how much does that suck, right? It does suck, but I think it might be actually the best option. It's yeah. either higher risk, higher reward, with the um, Gazette into sap or eviscerate, so you have three outs. A backstab would be also playable. The prep doesn't do anything then, but it's still an out because it's too damaged, so you can trade with the agent. So you have four outs in right. your deck, and he goes for it. He's going for it. Preparation. He needs to hit something here. And is so. Second blade flurry. And that is terrible. Emperor lives. Wait, how much damage is that? 21. Uh, two... yes, yes, 21. Yes, 21. Yeah, 21 22. plus the hero power, 22. 22. Yeah. Um, I guess you play Drake first. Maybe yep. you will get a swipe. Oh, baby, yeah, that would be awesome. Oh, swipe would be so backbreaking here. Yeah, for sure. Even the Wrath is pretty awesome because if you can pick up the Wrath, then you can get you get to go face with the Emperor essentially. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm, also, like mm -hmm. the Gadgetan needs to be taken out, but if you can manage to take that out with a spell, you don't have to worry about that three two. Wow. Oh. Whoa! Combo this turn. Interesting. To be honest, I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't either, but so he gets to do how much? 15 damage to face, puts the rogue to 12, maintains a full health emperor that he saw there was no answer for in hand, and innovates out the shredder. I like I, I like now I look at it, I love this play. I think this is awesome. Okay. And he still gets the discount on the Azure Drake. And I mean, the chances of drawing this swipe were slim. Oh, Wrath, right? Because he already he used one. Uh, he already used one Wrath, if I remember correctly, this game. Right. But like the important thing about this play for me is that you saw how desperate your opponent was on the previous turn. Like they they Gadgetan prepped blind to try and draw an answer to Emperor. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no answer to Emperor in hand. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I love this play just to protect the Emperor long term. Obviously, you burn through all your cards, but <laughs> holy moly. <laughs> I was going to say, you burn through all your cards, which probably gets chat spamming like Emperor value, Ellie Giggle, etc. But um, yeah, when your last card is an Azir Drake, that's a pretty fine position to be in, especially when you top deck the second one. So, but you first played Azure Drake for four mana because you can top deck um, Druid of the Claw, Druid which might be better this turn. Might be, but maybe it's not. It, might be, it will be better, right? Yeah, I think Druid of the Claw is a better option. Wrath for two. Hero and power, you're at 19. Yeah. There's no way your opponent can kill you from. Especially after using one prep already. Oh, you can play that. Uh, now you have to hero power the 3 1, right? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. 
So nine more damage to face. You're definitely threatening lethal now. So nine more to face, and you have uh, 13 on board. So yeah, comfortably threatening lethal here, and you know your opponent's hand is full of minions based on the the last couple of turns. So looking in pretty good shape here. Oh, mm, that's not good. This looks like it could be the end, unless there is a huge draw here. I mean, that, that was needed a long that... time ago. Yeah, but it does theoretically keep him alive for now, but he's in so much trouble. There's so many outs. Yeah, any sort Force of, of nature savage or that is. That it that that's it. Live coach advanced to the semi-final against Zerolot. Super Jajan unfortunately needs to be okay with having a third or fourth place in the tournament. And uh, it's really cool that we saw him bringing rogue, but it didn't work against Life Coach Druid. Which had some ridiculous draws, though. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes against Zedalot. And Zedalot actually won against the Druid already. And that was against Tice, who is known for being the Druid specialist, right? So, yeah. yeah Congratulations to Life Coach. These players, the G2 players, practice together a lot. They devise lineups for new formats together. So the, the lineups, card for card, there's a good chance that they're just identical between Tice's decks and, and Life Coach's decks. So. Um, it may just be that um, Zerlot is in a decent position to take down this tournament with, with the, the specialist priest skills coming together in this one class tournament. Yeah, that's true. Now we'll see how it goes. But um, wow, that's an awesome, awesome thing. We have one last match for today, guys. So be sure to watch the grand final of G2 Esports Class Legends Invitational between SK Gaming Zerlot and G2 Esports Life Coach be a match to watch so don't go anywhere we'll be having a short break to prepare the players and give life coach a short break also to <laughs> uh, you know catch his breath yep. and we'll be right back after the break so don't go anywhere guys we'll be right back